Walker's deck kind of flew under the radar five and one today second time on camera Wilkerson with a fantastic performance in Orlando earlier this year he is going to be in the running here for the overall top eight at large bids at the end of the year absolutely so for those of you a little new to legacy the way that Imperial Painter works is you see Painter Servant enter play here this card gets set to blue in conjunction with Grindstone that mills over your opponent's entire deck that's the conventional kill uh, also plays a couple of Red Elemental Blast and Power Blast, which are easy to main deck in Legacy. We see these in Counterbalance lists because blue is so prevalent and very powerful once you have Painter Servant in place set to blue. Uh, Imperial Recruiter allows you to find Painter Servant or a variety of odd ducks and utility creatures like Magus the Moon, Jai Ballard, Phyrexian Revoker, and so forth. So what gets interesting here is that, well, Kristen's on a mulligan to five. He was able to play a Painter Servant on turn number one off of an Ancient Tomb. He has another Ancient Tomb in his hand, and if he draws a Grindstone, McDarby is dead. It's a turn two kill. Yeah, actually dead on a mulligan to five, which is absurd. He's going to fire off a copy of Cabal Therapy, probably going to just try and name Grind Grindstone, but we'll see exactly what he wants to name. You see Wilkerson's hand. It's not very powerful. He's got Ensnaring Bridge. He's got a Jaya Ballard and that other Ancient Tomb, but McDarby could die in the second turn of the game. And that's how explosive these combo decks can be in Legacy, especially the ones that are just about putting A and B together, like Sneak and Show, Reanimator. Turn two kills are not out of the question. Now, I can't imagine that McDarby's going to be able to hit with this first Cabal Therapy without use, without the assistance, excuse me, of Gataxian Pro. <laughs> we'll see what he named. Probably a reasonable card, and he didn't name Grindstone. You see Wilkerson pounding on the top of his deck saying, yeah, that's, that's what I want to draw. So we'll see what happens. A four-outer to win the game right now. Top card? It's a top hole. Oh. Some redraws. Yeah. It's a one mana artifact, you can tell. Yep. Tyler got excited there momentarily. Top is still an incredible draw here. He's going to put that into play. Take two to do it. From the tomb, he also gets to spin it if he'd like, and he will. Three cards. There's a grindstone there along with two blast. Oh, boy. Okay, well. I don't know if there's anything Midari can do about this. Does he have any two? He has innocent blood. That's his out here. That is a good card to find right now. There's the other tomb. We're actually going to do this right now. We're going to put it into play. Hmm. I wonder if that ends up hurting him at all. Well, he doesn't know. <laughs> he may not know exactly what, what David is playing, although it does, still feels like there's some risk here. Maybe he could have waited. Yeah, I don't, know if it, I don't know if it matters if he waits or if he just puts it into play right away, but he obviously opted to put it into play right away. And now McDarby with a ponder in his hand. He needs to ponder an innocent blood. I think that's the only out in this situation. We're yes, going to see. Certainly, the discard spells don't do anything any anymore. Every other card is very slow here. Uh, and the Planeswalkers provide no defense, even if they could be cast, so... I'll say this. If there's one player that can figure it out with this crazy deck, it's him. And it looks like he may lead off with Veteran Explorer and get some lands out of his deck, flashing back about therapy first, because the lands come into play untapped. That's a big deal. Yeah. So he gets to make an extra mana this way. And thin out his deck a little bit, yeah, so it makes yeah. the Ponder a little more likely to find Innocent Blood. So now he's going to flash this back, going to cast Cabal Therapy. Trigger for the Veteran Explorer is going to be on the stack, but first Cabal Therapy is going to... Actually, I think you... Okay, you resolve the Veteran Explorer first and then name with Therapy. Right. Because it is part of the cost of play yeah. Cabal Therapy is sacrificing the creature, so that triggers first. And Darby going to go get a Swamp and an Island here. Let's see if he can find an Innocent Blood. That's basically his out in this situation. If he can somehow get his way to Liliana the Veil, I don't know if he has one of those in his hands, but I don't think I don't think he does. Then again, if he did, he would have searched up two swamps, and he has three of those in his deck. So McDarby, gonna name card with therapy here. Name's Jaya, gonna cast a ponder. Can he find innocent blood? Two, three, him to Torak. Time to shuffle. So he's got another look at it. <laughs> you see him smiling, he knows what he can do. Back up outs with another Ponder since he hasn't played a land yet and has an island in his hand. How about a mystery card Some for David? Some redraws. Hiya! Brainstorm a little bit deeper. Hasn't played a land yet, so there's a Brainstorm. <laughs> See a smile here. One, two, three. Not able to find an innocent play. Got to concede the game. Tyler Wilkerson on a mulligan to five does win game number one here in Painter. Imperial Painter, excuse me, up a game of veteran, veteran Planeswalkers. Tyler got, uh, sorry, David rather got quite a few looks at it, but couldn't find the innocent blood, and Tyler's draw just a little too explosive. Yeah, able to find the grindstone and get the job done. We'll take a look at the sideboard. You see both players doing the same. Oh, we'll start with Mr. McDarby, who has two surgical extractions, four force of wills. Looks like a negate, two Vendillion clicks, two notion thieves, along with a couple copies of the Fluster Storm and a couple copies of Ensnaring Bridge. He's against painters, so let's see. Attacking doesn't matter. So Ensnaring Bridge, 
you're out. Fluster Storm counters instant or sorceries. That's probably out too. Not a lot. Tyler goes off primarily through creatures and artifacts, so Fluster Storm does not pro <laughs> provide much defense. Notion Thief to beat extra card drawing and brainstorm effects. You've come to the wrong place. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Vendillion Click, which is pretty good. Yep. You gotta like that card. Provides a clock, and it can also obviously break up some of the combo. The Gate, you gotta like. Counters Grindstone, some other spells, but you are playing inside that, a deck that has a ton of red elemental blast effects, so how good is Negate gonna be? Probably not that great. Force of Will, well, you probably want some counter magic, and then Surgical Extraction, you can make an argument for it, since you can kill a Grindstone and then remove all of them. I think Surgical Extraction is gonna come in here for David in part because I think the sequence you're describing is realistic. And secondly, he has so many inefficient cards for the matchup that a card that may not work all the time but has a high ceiling, like Surgical Extraction, is probably better than some of the mopier cards he has in his deck. He needs to speed up a little bit, and that's why the Vendelian clicks are also important. I agree. So on Tyler's side, four Firebolts and a Staring Bridge, a Transphere, a Shard Phoenix, a Ratchet Bomb, a Rest in Peace, Manic Vandal, Aethersworn Cannabis, Cod of the Hammer, Spiritual Focus, Spirit of the Labyrinth, and Red Elemental Blast. I think a, a lot of these cards are Enlightened Tutor targets, and Tyler is playing the list that we saw uh, Jared Betcher and Ruben Bressler play at the Invitational, mm -hmm. where there's a white splash in the deck to facilitate Enlightened Tutor, so a lot of these are just Tutor targets. I think the Spirit of the Labyrinth is a really good card to bring in here. I suspect you're going to see the Red Elemental Blast come in as well. The Cough of the Hammer, I don't know if he knows exactly what David is up to, but I think he may suspect that he's up against some sort of mid-range removal-oriented deck where uh, Cough of the Hammer may provide some real trouble for David to get out of. It's also very good at taxing Planeswalkers, and if Tyler suspects that David is on a Planeswalker-heavy strategy, Cough does a lot of work there as well. Yeah, you know, this is always fun to see people play against McDarby's deck because do they know what they're up against? This deck is very strange. You know, it's a deck that people think is Nick fit, uh, deck that we've seen before. It's a veteran explorer deck, but again, if you don't really know what you're up against, this is a this is a Planeswalker control deck. That's all this is. Yes. It's a very unique take on it. It does have some discarding of taxi and probes and some interesting removal spells and innocent, innocent blood and pernicious deed, but those are all cards that McDarby is using to his advantage. There's no disadvantage to those cards in this deck. Yeah, I'm interested to see what Tyler does with Koth the Hammer here, because if he thinks that David is just a Nick Fit deck, I Koth is pretty bad against those decks because Nick Fit's so good at blocking and yeah. coming up the ground. David's deck is actually quite susceptible to Koth. He doesn't have a lot in the way of blockers. He's trying to win primarily through Planeswalkers. So if Tyler knows exactly what David's up to, Koth is very powerful and should be coming in. But if he suspects incorrectly that David is just a conventional Nick Fit deck, then he may leave Koth in the sideboard. Both players shuffling up here. Got to give a shout out. Got to. Brian Braun to win. Congratulations. That is just a great story there. Yeah, Brian Braun to win. On day one of Minneapolis was X and two. He had to make the top eight this weekend to be able to qualify for the Pro Tour in Atlanta next weekend, the Pro Tour in Portland later this year, and the follow-up Pro Tour. So basically, a GP with three PT invites at stake. And he was able to run off six matches in a row on Saturday to make the top eight. So mega congrats to BBD. Already qualified for our Players' Championship. That's why he's not here chasing another tournament series, and it was able to get the job done. Pretty insane. Yeah, BBD's tournament results over the last three years have, have just gotten so much better, and it's just a tribute to how hard he works. So uh, there's no guy that I'm really happier for to see do well in these tournaments, given how much work he puts in, how much his ability is scaled up. Uh, really well-deserved invite. Congratulations to him. Darby here with the Polluted Delta. Game two of round seven underway. A Pyroblast, the draw here for Wilkerson. You see he's got a Phyrexian Revoker. His hand's nowhere near as explosive this time. Gonna play an Ancient Tomb first, however. It looks like he may lead off with 2-1 Pesky Artifact, and he will. See what he wants to name. And he wants to look, he wants to name Polluted Delta, but you can't do that. Nope, they don't let you do that anymore. You can't name the land. With Pit Needle, you can. Yes. With Revoker, you may not. And he's got a name Liliana the Veil, a popular name with Frex and Revoker against David McDarby. No one remembers the deed. Right. No one names the deed. Well, if they have the Liliana, they just kill your Revoker straight away, so you kind of have to name Liliana. But deed kills it all. Well, it depends how much all is, and it's a lot slower. Get it all out of my office. That's what deed does, and that's what deed may do this game, as McDarby already has one in his hand. You see him with the Jason of Brainstorm as well. Tyler doesn't all, also doesn't necessarily know about whether or not David has Deed in his deck. Oh, that's, of course. That's what makes this match kind of compelling is Tyler sideboards and plays the game much differently based on whether or not he's informed about what David's doing or if he doesn't really know. 
from Darwin in such a basic island. He definitely knows what he's up against here. He wants to make sure he gets the basics out of his deck. He's going to go brainstorming here. Three cards coming. See what he's able to find. Looks like a veteran explorer was picked up among the other cards there. The therapy combo with veteran explorer is available as well. Those non-basics not so great in the matchup. So it looks like he's going to put a couple of those away. Got to be careful with Veteran Explorer against these Imperial Painter decks. We saw the last game Tyler didn't have red mana. Often these decks don't, or they're bottlenecked on red mana. So it's not a freebie to give Tyler two mountains. It opens up a lot of possibilities for the way he, he gets to play out the game as well. Absolutely. Darby still has not played a land yet for the turn, considering playing maybe a forest or a swamp. Again, does have the basics. Maybe he wants to fire off a little Cabal Therapy action. Then again, maybe not. We'll see. It looks like he does, and that's where he's going to go. See what he wants to name here. And of course, we'll have confirmation for you guys at home in just a moment. Going to lay out the hand, Will Wilkerson. And he went with Red Elemental Blast as opposed to Pyro Blast. He was so close. And there's four Pyro Blast in the list and two Red Elemental Ooh. Blast. The reason for this is the deck plays in Steering Bridge, so it prioritizes cards that can just cast. Pyro Blast and Red Elemental Blast are worded slightly differently. Pyro Blast you can ca cast no matter what, whenever you want to. It only looks on resolution if the thing happens to be blue. Mm -hmm. With Red Elemental Blast, it has the target has to be blue to even cast the spell in the first place. So, so a swing and a miss there for McDarby, but he does have information. And chances are the Explorer will hit on the next turn. And comes the Revoker for two. McDarby's going to go down to 17. We'll see what Wilkerson wants to do on this turn. Does have a Grindstone in his hand. Does have Imperial Recruiter in the hand as well. But he's going to drop down the Grindstone right now. Going to play this Mountain. And just pass the turn back over to McDarby. And that Imperial Recruiter in Tyler's hand does represent the kill. As that can go get Painter Servant. And that in conjunction with Grindstone wins the game. David is, of course, aware of this from the therapy last turn, so he knows that he is looking at death in the near future. Must tread carefully. And we're going to see him work his way through this turn. Better Explorer, really interesting in this deck, just providing the meta acceleration and the fixing, everything he needs. Really like it here. Especially in the matchups where it's not symmetrical, yeah. which is, is the case against almost all your Delver opponents. That's where Veteran Explorer really shines. The man advantage lets you get ahead of Daze and Spell Pierce, and then they don't find anything, you get two lands. It's a really big edge. Are we going to play a Tropical Island this turn? See him doing a little bit of math here, trying to figure out exactly what he needs to do, where he wants to go. Counting out mana is the thing right now. He needs to make sure that Tyler can't kill him with just the Imperial Recruiter in hand. Yeah, because the Veteran Explorer is... That'll give Tyler two mountains. That'll give him three red and then two for an ancient tomb. And then if you kind of double end, that's seven. So the question is, does he have the ability to play Imperial Recruiter, play Painter, and activate Grindstone? And so two for the Painter, three for the Recruiter, that's five. And you got the two others. Grindstone costs three, so that's a total of eight mana all in one turn. However, that doesn't account for Wilkerson's draw step, which could be a card like Simeon Spirit Guide. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what McDarby's trying to figure out right now is exactly how safe is the decision that I'm making. And the two mountains for Tyler, the last two in his deck, it looks like, with the other one in his hand. So now it's time to see what McDarby's going to name here with the Cabal Therapy that's been flashed back. I would assume now that he's given Tyler mana, that's going to be Imperial Recruiter. You could say that. Say that. Recruiter's probably the best of the bunch. We'll see what he goes with here. And there goes the recruiter. You guessed it. So Tyler's hand right now looks like just a blast and then a couple of hands. And not a lot, but again, only Imperial recruiter needed to allow this hand to go off. I mean, Darby looks like he's going to try to resolve a brainstorm here, maybe in the face of that pyroblast. That's going to resolve Liliana the Veil, Ponder, and a Verdant Catacombs here for David. Tyler not willing to fight over that. Got to be scared if you're McDarby. Again, you know you can just die the next turn. That's deck a terrifying feeling. Yeah, his deck doesn't really provide him much in the way of defense from all this. It's just the force of Will's post board. Yep. And if he's able to get Deed in play and knock out Tyler's permanence, that could be helpful as well. Is it time to cast Liliana now? Probably not with the Revoker still there. 
It's going to be time to cast a ponder then. Will this draw out a blast? It will not. So two and three. Cabal Therapy. Is he interested in that card? Going to reorganize the deck a little bit here. Cabal Therapy allows him to take out the Pyroblast, and then that opens up a spot for Jace. Mm -hmm. And Jace Fate Sealing could be a route to victory here. There's your Therapy. Oh, he says, give me your Blast. And now you got three lands. All right, don't kill me. He's going to mill him. Turn over a couple of lands there. Yeah. Oh. oh, my goodness. Oh. oh, my goodness. Oh, Tyler. Oh, you dirty, dirty man. My goodness. Tyler Wilkerson with the perfect top deck on the perfect turn defeats David McDarvey two games to zero. Imperial Painter moving on to six and one. If McDarvey makes it through that turn, I think there's a very high chance he wins the game. Yep, for sure. Although, you know, in fairness, it looks like there's some systemic issues with David deck in this matchup. We saw David do a very good job containing a deck like Death and Taxes that isn't really able to interact with him. But David's not able to effectively interact with decks like this. Combo decks that don't care about Flusterstorm and don't care about Ensnaring Bridge, I assume David really struggles against because mm -hmm. that's his primary ways of cheating those kind of matchups. And of course, Imperial Painter cares nothing for those kind of cards. Yeah, that's definitely true. Just trying to disrupt the hand the best that he can. He can't stop the top of the deck, at least until Jace comes into play. And again, if Jace is able to make it into play there, he's probably good to go. Um, but unfortunately, was not able to do that, and then he couldn't start fate sealing, and then a top deck painter servant gets the job done. That's why Tyler Wilkerson is six and one. Yeah, the fate sealing doesn't necessarily lock Tyler out of the game. Of because course. He can start grindstoning himself mm -hmm. if, if David is leaving stuff on top. But you have to imagine David is a pretty big favorite there, assuming he's able to get to next turn. Yeah, I would think that that's the case. Um, but he wasn't able to. <laughs> that's nope. the problem. And that's why Tyler Wilkerson is 6-1 and one with a chance to draw into top eight. Again, we have seen him win on the Open Series before. Orlando, week two of season one. You and I were both there. Mono Blue Devotion took it down. And they lost in the top four with Omnitel. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if he's able to hoist a title here in Legacy. As we already know, he can win in Standard.